Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Danny, for that. I appreciate that uh, introduction. I am a great-grandfather. No, not yet. Amen. <laughs> Getting close there. Thank you. Um, praise God. It is a blessing to be with you guys this morning, I mean, afternoon. Praise God. You know, one thing we, uh, we want to, before anything, be, uh, be, on behalf of me and my wife, we want to thank your pastors, Pastor Danny, Sister Sabrina, for their hospitality. <laughs> they have been amazing hosts. They want to feed us left and right and right and left. We had some awesome tamales right before the service. I mean, yes, that was great. I ate one, and I said, I need another one, but I said, I better, better not. Amen. But uh, praise God, that was amazing. Uh, but thank you guys. Appreciate your uh, hospitality. And it's just a blessing for me and my wife to be here. And um, we're here with you here in Whittier. Um, remnant. Amen. But uh, this morning, I just pray that God would just help us um, as we're here today. And I believe God wants to do that. You know, I want to do something that uh, I think it's important that we do. You know, we are in Southern California we did drive eight hours, not because it's usually eight hours. We hit all the traffic here on the 210 coming in here. And it shows people are out. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. People are out. Amen. And, but, you know, one of the things Southern California is known for uh, famous people, famous people. And I was thinking, man, uh, I know there's a lot of famous folks uh, the only famous folks I know is from the famous folks from the Sacramento Kings, that's right. <laughs> um, I just had to throw that in there, guys. Um, I'm from the king country right there. Um, but no, um, I know there's a lot of famous people in this area. Me and my wife were here walking the streets of Whittier. We thought we'd seen LeBron, but I don't think it was LeBron. Um, but, you know, if somebody was, to come, a very famous person was to come up here, Everybody will probably go, yeah, all right, all right, amen. Well, this morning, we have a very, very special guest. It's not me. It's not me. It, it, his name is Jesus Christ, amen. <laughs> and so this morning, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. Let's stand to our feet. Let's give the Lord Jesus Christ a big hand this morning. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Praise you, my God. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, my God. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we ask, my God, that you will be lifted up in this service. And I pray that you, my God, would help us. That your Holy Spirit, even now, will prepare our hearts and our minds for your word, my God. And that you will change us. Father, and that you will make us the people that you called us to be, my God. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. And God's people said, amen. amen. You may be seated. Uh, praise God. I want to minister a message I entitled, amen, Abiding in the Vine. Abiding in the Vine. And it's out of the Gospel of John, chapter 15. I grew up in the Salinas Valley uh, when I was about seventh grade. In seventh grade, one of my friends... Um, his dad was a foreman uh, in the strawberry fields. And so one, uh, during the summer, my friend said, do you want to go pick strawberries? And because Salinas Valley is known for agriculture, you know, uh, lettuce, cauliflower, uh, whatever you want, onions, it's there. You know, celery, man, it's, it is fresh, fresh stuff. So um, I remember growing up, uh, my friend invited me to go with him for the summer, make a few dollars. So I said, oh, cool, I'll go. And we went to the strawberries and start picking strawberries. Um, strawberry fields are, you know, we've heard the song from the Beatles, Strawberry Fields, but um, it's actually a whole different thing. Strawberry fields don't grow on trees. They grow on the floor. And so in order for you to pick strawberries, you're either going to pick them like this, like that all day long. You're going to be out there. Uh, all day long picking strawberries like this or they would give you some knee pads and then knee pads you would have to go on your knees all day long so you had two options either you're going to be on your knees all day long for eight to ten hours 
or you're going to be all hunched back all day long. And there's many, many people that do that uh, year after year. So appreciate your strawberries. Um, and I remember um, going through those uh, strawberry fields and, and picking strawberries. And, and, and it was very hard work. Uh, your back hurts. Your hands get stained uh, because of the, the strawberries. You can't use gloves because you can. It's impossible. It's hard to pick up the little strawberries. And so we would make some money. Uh, during that time, just a little bit of money. We had strawberry fights most of the time. And so, um, and so but it was, a, it was a time that we had in growing up there and, and just picking strawberries. And it was a cool time. And so I want to read a scripture. In the Gospel of John, I'm going to read a few verses, starting in verse 1. The Bible says, uh, John chapter 15, verse 1, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it, bear, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you. Unless you abide in me. Verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Amen. So here the word of God compares the Christian life. Compares you and I to the vine. The grapevine. And so here the, for one of the first things that the Bible says is that Jesus is the true vine never seen it like that we always read that scripture jesus is the true vine he is not an imposter he's not fake he is the way he is the truth and he is the life amen the bible says here that he is the true vine amen now it says that god jesus is the vine you and I are the branches. We are the branches. God's people, you're the branches. Amen. Jesus is the vine. You and I are the branches. That's what the Bible says. He, the word of God is comparing your life to a grapevine. Jesus being the true vine, you and I are the branches. And then it says, and God, the Father, is the vine dresser. Meaning that God the Father, he is the gardener. He is the one that takes care of the vine. Amen. And so here the word of God, so he compares our lives to that. And not only that, the Bible is saying that God has called you and I to bear fruit. When God saved you, as we got saved, God expects us to bear fruit. Amen. Amen. To be fruitful. To be people of God that are fruitful. Amen. And that's why the Bible says, amen, abide in the vine. God, is the, uh, God the Father is the gardener. And we begin to bear fruit. Amen. We are not going to bear fruit like strawberries and oranges and all those things. We know that. What, what is the fruit that God is speaking about? Amen. There's a few things. The fruit that God is speaking, is speaking about is your life. The change that takes place in your life. The character of God being built in us. That is the fruit that God wants you to bear. He wants you to bear the character of God. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. Amen. God wants us to bear fruit, amen. It is also, amen, the growth that takes place in our lives. Um, back in 1987, I gave my life to God. I went to the men's home there in Stockton, California, right there with Pastor Art, amen. And so, uh, praise God, I knew that once I got saved, God wanted me to bear fruit, amen. 
And so what is the fruits that God is speaking about here in the word of God? God is speaking not only the character in our lives, but also what we do for God. Amen. The ministry, the work of God. Amen. God wants you to be fruitful. God wants to use your life. God wants to use our lives. Amen. And so he wants us to be fruitful. He wants us to be involved in the kingdom of God. God has called us to use our lives. God didn't just save us to just save us. God didn't save us just to live happily ever after. Amen. No, God saved us because he has a purpose in mind, a work for you and I. Amen. That is the work that God has called us to do. The fruit that God is speaking about here is the change, the character, the work, and also the life that God gives us. The joy, the peace. Amen. The joy and the peace that God gives us when we get saved. There's, an, there's a joy and the peace that comes from God that this world cannot give you. Amen. Amen. There's a joy and a peace that only God can give you. Amen. And why do I say this? I say this because one, one thing that is very probable that takes place in the life of a person that loves Jesus Christ, a person that is serving God, you can come to a place in your life that you may feel a little frustrated. You may feel like, oh my gosh, what's next in my life? What, what are you going to, God, what's next? I don't feel the, the thrill that I used to feel before. Amen. And so many times when that takes place in our lives, we feel that God, that all that we need to do more for God. I need to do more. I need to do this or that. No, the word of God says here that if you abide in him, everybody say abide. If you abide in him, you shall bear more fruit. So what the, what, the, what the word of God is he, saying here today is that we need to uh, abide in him. Amen. So this morning, I just want to, well, this afternoon, I want to uh, look at uh, just a couple of things. One of the first things that we need to do is to connect with God. In the book of John chapter 15 in verse 4. The gospel of John chapter 15 in verse 4. The Bible says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Amen. The word abide means to connect closely. Amen. To connect closely. Um, can it be sometimes in the life of a Christian that you can come to a place in your life that you may be losing some of that joy, some of that excitement. Amen? Hear me out. Some of that joy, some of that excitement in your life. Because maybe somewhere in our lives, we may not be connecting with God. Amen? I'm not saying that you're not praying. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is that we may not be connecting with God. Amen. So here the word of God tells us here that if we're going to bear fruit, if we're going to be the people that God calls us to be, he wants you to connect with him. He wants you to connect with him. And here the word of God is not saying that it's an option. It's not an option. What God is saying here is something that he's commanding us that we should bear fruits, amen, and that we need to connect with him and abide with him. It does not come naturally. It takes work and it takes time, amen, and abiding with God has to do with connecting with God. It takes time. It takes discipline. But it is there where God begins to help us in our lives. Amen. Um, you know, sometimes we can come to church. We can be doing what God wants you to do. And you might be even praying. 
but somewhere in your prayer life, amen, or as you're connecting with God, as you're praying, there's a loss of connection with him. Let me give you an example. Just recently, um, as i um, been trying to get closer to God, one of the things that I started doing is started doing a journal. As I pray in the morning, I got this journal. Uh, it's not a diary. I'm not saying it's good morning, dear Abby, or anything like that. It's a journal. It's a journal between me and God. And I started with, good morning, Lord. Good morning. And then I began to say, okay, God, um, I began to pray. And one thing that I noticed is that on my first page, um, all I wrote was, good morning, God. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Um, that's all I wrote. There was no connection. I was praying. Have you ever prayed and you get up and you really didn't pray? You stood there maybe 30 minutes, maybe even 45, some of you maybe an hour. But during your time of prayer, you thought about how much you over Verizon Wireless. <laughs> the other day I was praying, Verizon Wireless was supposed to give me some kind of kickback. It never came through. Man, I was upset. And I, I got up in the morning got to pray, and all I thought about was Verizon Wireless and my $300, and I got up 45 minutes, I said, I didn't pray. I thought about Verizon. And I believe that God wants you to be fruitful. God wants to use your life. God wants to build his character in our life, but somewhere we have lost connection with God. We might go through the motions. We might get on our knees. We might even say a few words. And it caught me when I was doing this journal, I almost felt like a stranger with God. like when me and my wife were first dating, well, let's not say dating, courting. When we were first courting, uh, we're not tweeting. I didn't know what to say to her. I didn't know what to say. It was like, okay, what do I say? And we just looked at each other for a while, but that was it. <laughs> and sometimes you can be, you and I can be like that with God. We're there, but we're like strangers. And God says, I want you to be fruitful. I want to give you my character. I want to give you life. I want to give you peace. I want to give you joy, but I want you to connect with me. I want to do a great thing in your life, amen. I want to give you something that you may not have. And Jesus said, look, if you abide in me, you're going to bear all kinds of fruits. The mistake we make many times is that we think that God is saying you need to do more. No, God says you need to abide more. We can be doing, but not abiding. And when we abide, the fruit of God takes place in our lives. Amen. In the book of John, chapter 15, verse 5, not only should we uh, um, connect with God, but we need to continue. To abide means to continue. In the gospel of John, chapter 15, and verse 5, the Bible says, I am the vine, you are the branches, he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, 
you can do nothing. I love you guys' weather in the 80s. We're 100 plus over there. <laughs> um, um, you may feel sometimes you can come to a place in your life and you may be frustrated. You may be in church for a number of years. There's some people that come to a successful place in their lives, whether it be ministry, whether it be a career, and they say, what's next? And in those times, people, if people are not careful, they end up doing something they shouldn't do. There's people that have affairs. There's people that end up doing things, drinking, drugs, all kinds of different things. Why? Because they have come to a place in their lives and they say, God, what's next? And God says, you need to abide in me. You need to connect with me. Jesus said, this is not an option. He says, look, if you're going to bear fruit, much fruit in your life, I want you to connect with me. I made it a point that in the morning, I will not look at my phone before I go pray. I will not look at it. I don't care who posted what. Um, I, I don't care who emailed me. It can wait. I don't care who texted me. What God wants for you and I to do is put him first. Not your social media, not anything else. And so I made it a point that I will not look at my phone in the morning. I will not do that. Because if I do, I know there's a lot of things that I can do. Oh, right, somebody text me or somebody, oh, an email. Oh, right, sale at Macy's. Cool, man. And so Jesus says here that if you abide in me, you're going to bear all kinds of fruit, amen. And without me, you can do nothing. And what is that fruit? That fruit is that peace, that joy, the work of God, the character of God, the goodness of God upon your life, amen. That is the fruit that Jesus is speaking about here today, amen. And God calls us to do that. Um, more fruit is produced in us. And through us when we abide in him. More fruit comes in our lives when we focus on him. We, he will lead you to more fruit. I, I believe that, yes, God has an amazing plan for you. God has a great purpose for you and I. And um, the key is always going to be to connect with him and abide with him. You know, in golf, I'm not much of a golfer. I played golf before. And one of the things about golf is learning how to connect with the ball. It looks easy, but it's not. You've got to connect with that ball. You've got to learn how to hold the club, but then you've got to learn how to hit that ball and hit it straight. You've got to connect. In basketball, you've got to connect with the hoop. Oh, there's a hoop back there too. <laughs> All right. I can't make it from over here. Um, and uh, many times, 
one of the things that happens to us, why is it that today, amen, many times we're not able to connect with God and abide with him? And there's all kinds of different reasons, but I want to look at here the word of God says in the book of John chapter 15 and verse 9, and it speaks about love, amen. The Bible says, as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love, amen. Amen. And so here, the word of God says, amen, that we need to abide in him. And as we abide in him, and the Bible says it's because he loves us, amen. And one of the reasons many times, amen, uh, why is it sometimes that people sometimes fail to abide with God and connect with God. And one of the reasons is that sometimes we feel that God doesn't like us. You say, I don't think like that. Sometimes many, many people feel like that. Just last Sunday we celebrated Father's Day. Praise God. Amazing time. Thank God for all the dads. I told my wife, man, this, you know, when your kids get older, thank God, because then they got money and they can give you gifts. Amen. Um, they were little before, now they're all adults. It was like Christmas time came. It's like, wow, man, another one? Oh, my God. They had a little line. It's like, wow. Thank God for that. Amen. Um, many times people don't connect with God because you feel that God doesn't like you. Your past is there. You remember your failures. You remember things that have taken place. And many times when people feel that God doesn't like you, you stay away. You stay away. You feel that God doesn't love you. Because you failed him somewhere. Now, some time ago, I was talking to a young man. He failed God. He said, How can God love me? How can God accept me? And so when we feel like that, we stay away from God because we feel he doesn't like us because somewhere we fell short, we failed him. And yes, it is true, amen, but God, we, we serve a God that is merciful. We serve a God that forgives us, amen, and that's the God that we serve, amen. Sometimes many people stay away from God because they feel that they're not good enough. A pastor can feel like that many times. Um, you look at your life according to your ministry. You feel that God loves you according to the size of your church. Me pastors go through that. Um, many people in ministry sometimes, as you're doing the work of God, you may feel that you're not as, as successful. And you may feel that God may not like you because of that. You may feel that God doesn't love you like the other person that is more successful. And so... We know that God is the one, amen, he loves us regardless. It's like a father. A father loves you regardless, amen. 
And so here Jesus says here, so look, I want, you to, I want you to abide in me, and I want you to bear much fruit, but you have to understand that I love you, and I care about you. I was reading the story here. I was actually watching the interview of Oscar de la Hoya. I love boxing, and he said that his father passed away a few years ago, and in his interview, Oscar de la Hoya said, um, my father never told me that he loved me. But he said, but I knew he did. And he said, and he went to this grave, and he never told me he loved me. Um, and sometimes we may have that mentality with God, amen. That because of something that took place in our lives, we feel that God doesn't care about us or doesn't love us because of our failures. But that is a lie, amen. Because here the word of God says that God loves you and I, amen. God loves us, amen. And regardless of how you're performing or regardless of your past, God cares about us, amen. Thank God for that, amen. Sometimes people feel like, oh, I'm not as gifted as that person. I'm not as gifted as the other person. Those things don't matter. God is the one that loves us and cares about us. Amen. In the book of John, chapter 15 and verse 10. The Bible says in John, chapter 15, verse 10, the Bible says, If you keep my commandments... You will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So here, the word of God is saying here that as we abide in God, amen, we also obey God. Everybody say obey. Obey. Amen. We obey God. Um, it, it doesn't come naturally. Obeying God takes discipline. It takes work. But here the word of God says, amen, that we need to obey God, amen. Abiding in God is obeying God, obeying him, very simple. And I thought about this, what are the different things, amen, uh, that we need to obey God? Because it doesn't come naturally. It's something that takes work, it takes discipline, it's something that we want to exercise in our lives. The Bible says, exercise yourself unto godliness, amen. So in other words, we need to obey him, amen. As we abide in God, we obey him. Why? Because God wants you to bear much fruit in your life, much fruit. Uh, so the work, the character of God, the the, the goodness of God, God wants us to bear all that in, the, in our lives, amen. Uh, but, amen, we need to obey him, amen. So one of, the th one of the things that I was looking at this morning and this afternoon is that one of the ways that we obey God, uh, obey God is with our eyes. We exercise obedience with what we see. And I know this is a challenge in the days that we live in today. Our obedience has to do with what we see. It's a challenge. It's a challenge, amen. Uh, how, does, how do you want, uh, how is God going to bear fruit in our lives, amen? By obeying him. With what you and I see. What we give ourselves to, Amen. The things that we watch, the things that we give ourselves to. And so that is so, so important, amen. It's like I thought about my own personal life and I have to uh, discipline my eyes, amen. It's important. That's a, an, um, uh, that's a thing that we need to do in our lives. We need to exercise what we see, amen. Um. I spend a lot of time at the church by myself. I have a, a computer that's connected to the internet. I have to be honest with God. I have to be honest with my wife. The temptation's always going to be there. 
and what I give myself to, what I see is so important. There's some things I know I can't watch. Um, it's obedience. And I know that it's all over the place now. I know it's something that you can't escape, but it's always going to be there. And so we have to practice obedience with our lives. If we want to bear fruit with God, amen, we have to practice obedience with our eyes. And it is a, it is a challenge and it is a discipline that we have to take because it is so tempting today. And we will bear fruit in our lives, amen, and God will use us, but God wants us to obey him with our eyes. Amen. Second of all, we need to obey God with our lips. What we give ourselves to, the, speak, the words that we speak. You know, our lips, the things that we speak. The words that we use, amen, is so, so important because God wants us to abide in him and bear much fruit in our lives. And, and one of the things that God wants us to obey, to obey him is in our, our obedience and it's also with our words, the words that we use, you know. It's so, so necessary and so important today that we, uh, we obey God with our lips, with our lips. What are the words that we're speaking? What are the things that, we're, what are, the things that are coming out of our mouths? It's so important. Um, and today I, I do want to, uh, you know, encourage you. I want to help you. I want you to just... Um, do what God has called you to do, amen. And you might be saying, man, pastor, you're talking about our lips and our eyes and all these different things. Well, that's what's going to help us, amen. Um, third of all, we need to exercise our obedience with our steps. Where are we going? Where? What are the things, where... Where are our feet taking us? Where are the places that we're going? Where are the places that our feet are taking us? Don't put yourself in a place that's going to put you in a place that it's going to cause you to disobey God. Where are our steps taking us? Can it be that there, sometimes we, we go in a place that we shouldn't or that we know that it's going to cause temptation in our lives, amen? It's going to cause us to be in a place that it will tempt us. Um, can it be that sometimes, amen, God does not want you to go in a certain direction and we say, oh, no, you know what, I'm, I'm going to be all right. I'm strong enough to handle this. And God says, no. Amen. And so we need to exercise our obedience unto God. Amen. When we pastored in the church in Texas, there was a young family that got saved and um, great brother Great sister, had several children, and they were an amazing couple. And the brother had been set free from, he was an alcoholic. And, and he would always say, Pastor, is it okay for me to go here or there? And I would say, look, I can't tell you what to do, but I'm going to tell you what to do. <laughs> um, he said, you know what, I'm just going to shoot pool with my friends at this local place. Uh, what is that local place? He said, it's a bar. No, okay, yeah, that's not a good place for you to go. And he would say, oh, well, I'm just, Pastor, I am set free by the blood of Jesus and all these different things. But he said, I'm going to do this. And then I said, okay, that's what you're going to do. He failed. His wife had to go pick him up. He was outside on the sidewalk. 
Or maybe sometimes we go to a place that someone that might have gave you the eye. Some guy that he looked cute. And you said, whoa, I'm, I don't know if I should go over there. But you know what? I might, I might even witness to him or something. <laughs> or you go to the bank and you know that girl at the bank. She was real friendly. Well, I mean, really friendly. <laughs> and we say, well, Lord. God says, no, I think you should go to the other bank and you say well I don't like the people in that bank don't matter you're just going to do a bank you're just going to do a deposit or do whatever you're going to do sometimes we're not obeying God in the footsteps our eyes our words you know um What's coming out of here? What are the words that we're speaking? Um, how about our hearts? Exercise your heart unto godliness. The Bible says that um, we exercise our heart unto godliness. Amen. And so here God wants us to bear fruit. And we bear fruit when we obey him. Amen. And so we exercise also our hearts. Amen. And it's very, very important because sometimes what happens to us as we are trying to serve God, our hearts, man, our hearts are wicked. Our hearts are not right all the time. Amen. Um, some people can't go on social media because then your heart gets all jealous. You see somebody doing something better than you, it's like, oh my gosh. And you get jealous. Does that, does that happen to anybody here? I don't do a lot of social media because of that. I'm being real with you guys. Amen. Yes, amen. Or sometimes our hearts, amen, we have something in our hearts that maybe it's unforgiveness, it's envy, it's pride, whatever it is, amen. And if you can't handle, especially social media, it brings a lot of those things into our hearts and into our lives, amen. And so it is important for us that we exercise obedience unto God, amen, unto God. Abiding in the vine. Fruitfulness is not about doing more. It's about abiding more. Fruitfulness unto God is not about doing more. It's about abiding with him more. Connecting with him. Um, believing that he cares about you. That he loves you regardless of your past. Um, abiding has to do with obeying, obeying God. Abiding has to do with obeying God with your life. And when we do those things, God begins to bring more fruit into your lives. Um, in closing, let me share something with you. As you abide in God... Some of you, God has spoken to you about getting closer to him through this message. God has spoken to you, okay? God has spoken to you about connecting with him a little bit more. What's going to take place next is that you're going to start bearing more fruit. What's going to happen next, that as you connect with God, he's going to start challenging you in a different direction. As you connect with God, like you never connected with God before, you're going to see your life start changing. You're going to see a joy, a peace maybe that was missing. 
God's going to bring you to a place where more fruit is going to take place. Not because you're doing more, but because you're connecting more with God. Amen? Yes. Amen. Your life will be more fulfilling because you're connected to who? The vine, Jesus Christ. God, the Father, is the one that's going to uh, draw you to him. The Bible says he is the gardener. And it all this starts with you and I abiding in Christ. Amen. Let's give God a big hand this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Let's go ahead and pray this morning, I mean this afternoon. Hallelujah, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we praise you, my God. We worship you, God. And God, we thank you, Lord. Lord, uh, this morning, my God, we ask that you would help us and that you would draw us unto you. God, I pray that you would speak to our hearts and our lives even now. Father, there's people here today that may be frustrated. There might be people here that maybe somewhere a little bit the excitement and joy has lost, has been lost. There's people today that may be looking for answers in their lives. But God, your word says that we need to connect with you and abide with you. And I pray that today, my God, that lives will be changed and that more fruit will take place in the lives of people because of you. In the name of Jesus, God. Thank you, Lord. You know, abiding takes place in our lives when we accept Christ. I accepted Christ over 30 years ago. And my life has never been the same again. And that is the same thing with anybody here today. That you, have, you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have not accepted God in your life. I accepted God over 30 years ago. My life was going nowhere. It's going in a circle, a vicious circle. And I was looking for answers in life and all the wrong things. And one day I just surrendered. I said, God, okay, Lord, change my life. Here it is, not a whole lot, but here's my life. God did the impossible in my life. And God wants to do the same for you. Anybody here today that does not know Christ, you have not accepted him. But today, God is speaking to you. God wants to save you. And God wants to help you. Whether you're watching from online or you're here today, God really cares about you and he loves you very much. He wants to change your life. So today, before we change the order of the service, anybody here today, you want to accept God into your life. You want God to change your life. Please raise your hand and put it down. We want to have the privilege to pray with you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, the Bible tells us that today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. Today. Today is the day of salvation. And God is speaking to you today. Maybe you're a person that served God at one time. And now you want to rededicate your life to God. If that's you today, we want to pray with you. We want to pray with you. Because the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Of salvation in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus praise God well changing the order of the service let's stand to our feet
let's go ahead and, and begin to worship Jesus. Let's give him a big hand. You know, today can be the day that your life begins to change as a Christian. More fruit is going to take place in your life. Joy and peace that you've never had for a long time is going to take place in your life. Why? Because today you're going to make a commitment to God. And you say, God, I want to start connecting with you like never before. And as you do that, God will begin to use your life in a greater way. You'll begin to feel, feel the, the presence of God greater in your life. And so today... If God spoke to you, I don't want you to stay in your seats. I want you to come to this altar, and I want you to come and make a commitment to God that you're going to abide with Him, that you're going to connect with Him like never before. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, my God. In the name of Jesus, have your way, my God.